Well, good morning, Andrea. How are you doing today? I'm great. Oh, man, I'm telling you what, this, uh, this uh, whole thing with the schools being closed and all that, um, you know, you've heard me say that, you know, you may not get infected, but you're going to be affected by this coronavirus. Right. And the major effect that I'm feeling, which, you know, I can't cry about because it's, it's not much of a, you know, really, overall, it's not much, but um, my internet quality goes down because everybody in the neighborhood is home during the daytime. Usually right. I'm, I'm, I'm like the only person home during the day out here. Well, it'd be a good idea to practice uh, getting off the internet for a while, right? I work on the internet, Andrea. I can't. <laughs> I know you do. This is my business right here, right here on the internet. Yeah. You don't have to do that eight hours a day though. You know, That's so the good part. How many hours a day? Eight. Eight. Said you don't. I wish. To, I wish I only worked eight hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. I yesterday. Yesterday I was up at seven thirty, and getting everything prepared, and I was on a conference call by eight fifteen, and I did my last call. It ended at uh, eleven thirty last night. Wow. So, you know. People who say, oh, yeah, you work from home. That's not real work. It's, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I wish they saw what I did in a day. But the beauty of it, and you and I know this, the beauty of it is we get to choose. That's right. There's freedom. We get to choose. I get to choose what I'm doing. Um, I get to choose, you know, all that stuff. If I don't want to work tomorrow, I can take the day off. That's right. You know, so I really, I, I you know, even though you might hear me complain about it a little bit, um, yeah, don't take that too serious. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> right. My complaints compared to most people, pretty minor, pretty minor. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people out there whining right now. And it's like, come on, just enjoy your two week vacation. Come on. Yeah. I don't know though. I mean, if it's unexpected and they're not getting paid and all these different things, I can see where they're coming from too. Yeah. It's all going to work out in the end. Right. Like I saw a cartoon and it was a, it was a cartoon of a lady. She's sitting there in her chair and she said, you know, during this two week time frame, I took up knitting. I'm making a gift for my husband. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, what is she knitting? What do you think she's knitting? After I have knitting? no idea. After being home with her husband for two weeks. I don't know. A noose. <laughs> well, that would be easy to knit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw another video. A, a guy was uh, uh, making like a obstacle course like a uh, for his his kids because they were home so he was home with his kids and and so he made like an obstacle course you know in the house climbing up over the couch and over the coffee table and going underneath this and crawling under the bed and you know all these different things it was it was funny fun yeah and that's what people should do get together with their family and do things that you don't normally have time to do well it's too bad it's not hunting season man i i'm <laughs> We I'm doing social. Oh, I do social distancing in an excellent way during hunting <laughs> yes, season. Yes, you do. Everybody does. The husbands are gone. They're they're right. sitting at the cabin, you know. And, oh man, why oh, can't God. we just open up spring hunting for something? Because they're all pregnant right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Come on, ruin it for me. Ruin it for me. Yeah, but you know, so. I thought that we'd talk a little bit about age reversal and anti-aging today. Hey, that sounds like a grand plan. You know, everybody's been so busy just um, worrying about this, this, uh, you know, coronavirus and, and, you know, lockdown. I mean, heck, you look at New Zealand, they're in, what is it? Um, I don't know if they call it phase four or stage four of lockdown. Yeah. And uh, which means you can't leave your house. 
Well, we pretty much have that here in Michigan. Yeah, I was just reading about it. Michigan is, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, unless unless you're going to the store, you know, um, to get needed supplies, you better be at home. Yeah. And I and I agree with it. I agree with it. You know, the whole thing is, is that um, my son and I were talking about it last night. You know, Sammy's going to medical school and and he's worked with uh, some real horrible infectious diseases like uh like uh loss of fever and and uh ebola right yeah yeah i remember that yeah and he said there's a really bad one from south america that's like ebola that they haven't even studied yet they don't even know how it spreads yeah you know but you know so just a quick kind of talk on 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 that you know i mean we, we kind of go, oh, man, it, it came from, you know, people eating bats and things like that. But when you go to these third world countries and you look at people that um, don't have any money, the uh, ec- economics of the country is so bad that they got to eat whatever they can get their hands on. Well, that's a theory. Right. But that, that but that's that's I mean we have to go by what the the science is telling us and let's just let's just go with that I mean I know you believe in other things and and I do too but you know when we're talking about it on here we gotta we gotta go with the you know what's popular and and but you know Sammy saw it like Ebola down in down in um I mean down in in Sierra Leone yeah and lots of fever it's caused by eating bats and uh, and rats. It's caused by that. Yeah. It's it's spread by that. Let let's let's say that. That's a better term. Yeah. You know, it's spread by that. And so economics causes that that disease. And we can blame it on a lot of things, but that it's 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 economics. And like I told Sammy last night, I said, in today's world, there's no reason that there should be such a, you know, you got these people way up here that are, you know, gazillionaires their families in the next 2000 years, if they quit making money today, you know, they'd have enough money to survive a gazillion years from now. Yeah. And then you got the people way down on the bottom of the list who um, can't afford food. I mean, they, they might have, they might work in a rice paddy, but um, they, uh, they can't afford to eat the rice because they have to sell it in order to make money so they can buy the bats so they can eat. So moving right along to extending our health span. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to get into that a little bit. Hang on one second here. And, uh, you know, let's uh, let's do this. So so welcome to the call, you know, and, and let's talk a little bit about aging. Okay. Let's talk let's a little bit that. about aging. Um, if I do this, I'm going to minimize my screen because I want to read the screen that I have. Um, can you still see me? I see you right now. I don't see a screen. I see me little, you big. Okay. Um, well, I'm bigger than you. Yes, you are. <laughs> but can can you can you see me? Yeah, I see. I see only you. You see only screen. me. Yep. Okay. Hang on one second. I just want to see what we're seeing on um, on Facebook. I see. I see. There we go. I see both of us. Okay. So I just was, I just wanted to look over this first, you know, so I'm going to go over this because it relates to our topic today. Today, we're going to talk about what diseases, what common diseases, um, you know, not some obscure uh, disease that you never hear about, but what diseases are caused by uh, senescence. Right. What the research is showing, right? Yeah. So first thing I want to talk about is let's look at, what are the top 10 causes of disease? What do you think number one is? Um, I would say toxins. Mm, now, let's uh, let, let, go with a disease because toxins isn't a disease. You, you don't see anybody well, right on the You didn't say death. what's the top diseases. You said what's the top 10 reasons? Top 10 causes of death. And I said, oh. what diseases are the top 10 okay. causes of death? So what would be, what would be number one? Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. <laughs> Boom. I'm going to hit you in the head next time I see it. <laughs> Mo, um, half of, of people who died in 2016 
um, was because of ischemic heart disease and a stroke. Oh, that's been the cause for a long time now. Yes. 16 years. Yeah, yeah. that's what they listed. Okay. So globally, that, um, that, uh, that's, that's what they list. Okay. Okay. Heart. Heart attacks and strokes. Yep. Okay. Leading cause of disease. All right. And uh, then they say that, um, <laughs> that chronic obstruction pulmonary disease, COPD. Mm-hmm is up there right up in the top of the list right mm -hmm. lung right. cancer lung mm -hmm. cancer so those are uh environmentally caused typically yeah lung cancer well copd um can be caused by uh senescence and mm -hmm. and lung cancer as well so we'll go over that that's what that's okay. why I'm, I'm that's why i'm listing these diseases because i find it interesting okay. type 2 diabetes Okay. Is one of the leading causes of disease in oh, 2016. Yeah. That's rampant. Dementia is uh, is a leading cause of disease. It, it, it more than doubled between the years 2000 and 2016, making it the fifth leading cause of global death in 2016. Can I guess the next one? What's that? Kidney dysfunction? No, 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 no. I'm in fact, infections, infections. So anyhow, um, that's what, that's what I wanted to cover on that because I thought that was, I thought that was, um, um, quite interesting that, you know, that those were, um, those were, those were the leading cause of disease. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So, you know, now let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, diseases of aging you know aging is the leading predictor age is your leading predictor in uh in death associated with uh, with with chronic disease wouldn't yeah. you say that all those diseases that i just listed are chronic diseases yes they fall in the category of chronic disease right and so they account for more of the hospital bills Mm -hmm. or the health related bills and uh and and uh as well as death like we just talked about right so aging is a is a is is really the major contributor to death yes i agree <laughs> get old you die right but so wouldn't you say that all the research from the last hundred years has probably been on diseases specifically. Mm -hmm. Like you have, you have um, heart disease. We're going to treat the heart disease. Yeah, if a person has that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you know, and you have a stroke, and we're going to treat that. I don't have any of those. Well, I'm but just saying. If, okay. if a person had it, yep. Right. That's where kind of medical research has spent all their money on disease specific they're looking at the disease and they're trying to figure out how do we cure this disease well that should be their goal yes well that's what i wanted you to say thank you for you saying. knew i would <laughs> I, I i was leading you there i was kind of giving you the bait and i wanted you to go there for me because what they're showing is that if you cure one disease, guess what happens? Well, if you haven't cleaned up the system that caused that disease, I assume a different disease will pop up. Bingo. 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 So that's been the problem is that we've been spending gazillions of dollars on research for each disease separately and another disease takes its place. And, and, you know, so just a couple of years ago, um, they found that they found that, you know, cancer surpassed heart disease as being the number one killer. Uh -huh. But who knows, you know, they kind of go back and forth like this. And that's why, because we throw money over here, we throw money over there. Right. Well, you know, the other problem that we have is I just did the circle thing, which I've done several times. Our systems are all connected and 
modern medicine separates each system and they have specialists here, specialists here, and they do not communicate together. So right. when we bring it all together as a system, like you're saying, if one disease gets knocked out and another one crops up, it's because you haven't fixed the whole system. That's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So aging is really, it's the progressive loss of function of your tissues and organs over time. Right. Pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So if we can take and we can, if we can slop, stop aging, if we can slow aging, can't we really stop those diseases that we were talking about? Well, it makes common sense, right? Right. And, and so, you know, last year or two years ago now it was, you know, they listed uh, in the ICD nine, which is the code book for uh, disease mm -hmm. classification. They listed, uh, they listed aging as a disease. It's actually got its own diagnosis code now. And I know a lot of people that say, Oh, aging isn't a disease. Well, yes and no. Uh, technically it's not, but, um categorically it is a lot of people don't know that so we we we've we've done a great job you know you look at the you know the work that hayflick did right you remember the the mm -hmm. hayflick the hayflick limit you know what that is yeah i forgot exactly how to explain it but i just was reading about it again on the internet right so the hayflick limit really is this is that cells can only divide a certain number of times and mm -hmm. then they lose their ability to divide Right. So the term we don't want that to... I saw today was called um, a senescent cell permanent cell cycle arrest. And I permanent thought it, that explained it pretty well. Yep. So when the telomere, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and relate all these terms together because people say to me all the time, they say, well, if I take a product for you know, senolytics, then do I mm -hmm. need to take a product for telomeres? Do right. I need to take a product for stem cells? Right. They all do something different. You do. You need to take them all. And so we're going to try and tie them all together. We're going to try and wrap that all up together today, Andrea. Mm -hmm. how, do, how does it work? So cells have this hay flick limit, right? And it's all, it's limited by what? Um, their ability to reproduce correctly. Telomeres. Telomeres, yes. Okay. And so so what it what is a what is a telomere? It's like a caplet on a shoestring on the end of your shoestring, only it's a caplet on the end of your um, chromosomes in your DNA. Okay. So let me let me draw this out. You you tell me. I'm gonna draw it backwards. So you, you I, I, let's see if I can do this. Are you artistic? Gonna, <laughs> let's see if I can do this. Okay. So you have your, can you see that? No, it's not dark enough. Well, that's all I have. So bear with me. Wait, I know where I have a marker. Hang on. Okay, go get your marker. I have green and blue. So I can color code things. I like your shirt. You like that? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. It's comfortable. Okay. So how about now? Can you see that? Yes, I can see it very well. All right. So then let's see. So it would go this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the double helix. This is your um, chromosome. Pretty right. good example, right? Yeah. It's very cool that it's in the shape of the infinity symbol. Okay, so now, well, and it's linear, right? Mm -hmm. But on the end of this, on the end of this, so this has got all of your genetic um, information in here. But on the end of here, right? Yep. That's your telomere right. in green. Okay? Mm -hmm. So each time your, your cell divides, so this cell here, mother cell. Oh! Sorry. So this cell divides. Right? Yep. And it makes daughter cells. Yep. Okay. When that happens, you lose a piece of this telomere over here. Okay. So I'll just draw it out like this. So I won't draw the chromosome again, but I'll just draw the telomere. So the telomere 
was this long. Mm -hmm. So with each successive, um, right? Yep. And then it gets shorter. So each time the cells divide, the telomere gets shorter. Yep. And eventually the telomere gets too short. Right. And so this is designed, this is designed to protect this because now what happens is, is that if this, if this cell has gone through the hay flick limit and it's gone down to here, right? And it can't mm -hmm. divide anymore, right? The reason that it has the hay flick limit is because if this cell divided one more time uh -huh. and went through this cell division, it would take a piece of this chromosome, mm -hmm. right? And it would cut it off. So it's called mutation. So it would cause mutation and just cellular, dis let's just say cellular dysfunction. dysfunction. Yeah. Right. Can you see that? So, so mm -hmm. that's, that's why we have senescence. Right. It closes that process down. So it shuts it down right here. Mm -hmm. This chromosome can't go through this process anymore. It stops it. Mm -hmm. So senescence is normal. Right. Right. If yeah. we didn't have it, if we didn't have it, then this cell would continue to divide and divide and divide and divide and divide and divide and divide. And, divide. Um, mm -hmm. and that's what we call cancer. Right. That's what we call tumors. Right. And, and so a lot of people don't understand this, that, you know, where's this stuff all related? So you can see that, um, that this is all related. Right. So, so, um, these, these mitotic cells can go through this division and okay. they're limited. Just a minute. I go ahead and talk. I've got to answer this text. It's uh, important. It's important. Okay. So I'm just going to talk about this folks. I'm going to write this out. So you have three different kinds of, of cells that we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about mitotic cells which are your cells like your skin and your liver and, you know, the, the inside of the blood vessels. Those are the cells that they have a limited number of divisions. They have a hay flick limit. Okay. Then we're going to talk about stem cells and what stem cells are. Stem cells don't have a limit. They can keep dividing and dividing unless something goes wrong. And then we have the what's called the post mitotic cells, and basically those would be like say um, some of your cardiovascular tissue, uh, your nervous tissue, and things like that. Um, and those are cells that they uh, they can they can divide, but they do it really slowly, and and they need stem cells in order to do it. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's how we want to talk about it. But when you're talking about this, this, you know, cell division, you know, like I was talking about here, this is important. So you can see that when this cell gets uh, senolytic down there, when it goes into senescence down there, there's a reason for it to go into senescence. And so you don't want to just say, hey, let's get rid of all senescence because it's important. And uh, they found that it's important in, um, you know, in uh, wound healing and things like that. But the problem with, so I was just saying, uh, Andrea, that, that um, senescence is important, like for um, wound healing and mm -hmm. things like that. But when it comes to the accumulation of, um, of uh, stem cell, of, of senescent cells, then it's a problem. Right. Then it's a problem. And so when we're talking about um, senescent stem cells, right, all of a sudden, when they go into this senescent state, they're pro-inflammatory and they have other, um, they trigger other types of, of enzymes that cause the, the destruction of the cell matrix. Okay. And, uh, and so we're calling that 
something called uh, a or SASP, which is senescence dissociated secretory phenotype. Okay. Remember that. <laughs> I'm not oh, really you have to remember that SASP, one. but um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's basically, it's just basically saying that the stem cells that go into senescence, they're not normal. They, they, they do destructive things, right? Right. right. They, they emit enzymes that destroy the matrix of a normal healthy cell and they cause inflammation. Right. Right. And so, so it's, it's, it's not good. Um, there's uh, the, you know, when they're looking for stem cells, when they go in your body and they look up for, for not stem cells, senescent cells, they're looking for um, certain things, characteristics. One of them is an increased size of the, of the, of the cell itself. It's, it, it gets bigger. Okay. They find that this enzymatic activity is greater, right? So they can, they can find these uh, senescent some, uh, stem cells. Um, and the other thing is, is that when the, when the stem cell goes into um, senescence, it uh, emits other types of, um, of things that, that cause it to have um, increased survival rate. Oh, okay. So a senescent stem cell is actually stronger than a non-senescent stem cell because it's emitting these, these, these uh, pro-survival type of, of chemicals so that it can, it can resist apoptosis. Okay. Pretty interesting, isn't it? When you, when yeah. you start thinking about how the, bo how the body works. And so it can trigger some of these tissues um, to really kind of go out of control. Yeah, so, you know, as we're talking about this and it being a natural reaction of the body and everything, the thing that we've covered before is that normally your body would get rid of these but sure. as you age you don't have that ability like you did when you were younger so that is so, where so that that's what i was just talking about what about what happens in the aging process that makes it so it can't get rid of the senescent stem cells um well there's all kinds of things that start happening at age 35 that but one of the same. factors that they found is that the immune system doesn't have enough function anymore to go after the senescent stem cells. So we talk about immune system a lot when we're talking about what's happening in the world today with all the viruses and things like that. But at the same time, the immune system is related to the senescence. Right. Well, maybe there's a circle of stuff going on there because if the immune system is not as active as it was, and we have more and more stem cells creating this toxic overburden in our body, which in turn affects the immune system's ability. It's like a circle of, you know, it's getting on a merry go round of decay and degeneration, basically. Yeah, so there's, there's normal things that cause senescence, like wear and tear. You know, you go, you walk on the ice, you fall down, you know, wear and tear, that can trigger some senescence. And you need some senescent cells to create the scar so it heals up. Um, you have epigenetic types of things, you have a, a proteolytic type thing, oxidation caused by toxins, like you were talking about earlier. A telomere damage can yeah. cause, you know, just normal telomere damage, DNA damage, because we're getting affected by, you know, radiation, solar right. radiation, all that stuff can cause problems. And just, you know, normal exposure to everyday stresses and strains can, can cause problems. Um, smoking, they, when I looked this stuff up, um, smoking can cause a specific uh, 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 senescence of, of the, of the cells, which causes telomere damage, DNA damage. Right. And then, and then the body puts that cell into senescence on purpose. Yeah. I was just going to bring that up. You know, when you're smoking and you've got 350 different chemicals coming out of those cigarettes in your system, it's, it's gotta be affecting the health of your cells. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I kind of wrote down a, a bunch of different a bunch of different things right here on my, on my notepad, you know, and, and so I'm just trying to go through this as I was, as I was talking about it. So mm -hmm. they found that if a, um, that if a, uh, a person is, uh, is, um, if a woman is going through chemotherapy and radiation treatment for breast cancer, if they have like, uh, you know, how sometimes they'll put them on the chemo for prolonged periods of time, you know, Oh, let's prevent future cancer from happening. Mm -hmm. They find that um, 
it ages that woman 15 years. Right. So if you know anybody that that's that's uh, gone through uh, that's gone through breast cancer treatment, chances are inside their their um, their age is uh, is, um, um, you know, 15 years further along. Well, maybe an analogy of that would be everyone is seeing pictures of people who do meth. Meth is toxins, chemicals. I mean, look at how they age. Like they go from being 25 and 75, right? Yep. Yep. And and so when we talked about smoking, we talked about um, chemotherapy, physical act, even activity, they find that what it does is it triggers senescence of, um, of these uh, um, T cells, which is part of your immune system. Yeah, a big part. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the so the T cells, and uh, and and so then I read about I read about you know like with uh, um, we look at you know they call it molecular age, right? We know we know about um, you know the the calendar age, right? Chronological mm -hmm. aging. Mm -hmm. We know like bi biological aging. Now they're saying that it uh, they got to come up with a way of measuring um, molecular age. Oh, that makes sense. Right. Because mm -hmm. they're saying that if they know the molecular age of somebody's body based on mm -hmm. their, their number of senescent stem cells, mm -hmm. they can take and they can decide treatment based on the number, because it'll, it'll indicate how well that person's actually going to recover. Right. You know, cause we're made up of elements. So that makes right. so, sense. So if you have an impure impaired um, uh, system because of senescence, mm -hmm. you're not going to respond to the, uh, to the treatment that they're giving you. They found that with they, when they do, uh, you mentioned kidney dysfunction, you know, cause mm -hmm. you know, kidney diseases are a big killer in America too, in, in the Western world. And so when they do a kidney transplant, mm -hmm. They found that if they can test the molecular age of the kidney that's being donated. Oh, it's a good idea. You want to get a good one. Right. You never thought about that, right? <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> right. So, um, so if you think about that, so if, if, if somebody needs a uh, kidney or if they need any other organ, wouldn't it be important to know not just the age of the person? Cause if the person was 35, but molecularly, they were um, 80, which right. is possible, right? Oh, yeah, very possible. Depends on- Why, why would you want to put an 80-year-old kidney into a 35-year-old person? Exactly. Right? So th this, this is, I, mean, I thought that I just, when I was reading this stuff this morning and I was jotting these notes down, I just thought this is important things that, you know, people, um, our audience wants to know this kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, they should. Right? Why, why is this important? You know, why is this so important? So let's talk about, let's talk about diabetes. Okay. Right? So we're going to talk about the, the top causes of, of death in, in the world, in the Western world. And diabetes is up there in the top five. And so what happens is, is that if you have a poor diet when you're young, mm-hmm. Um, it triggers some things to happen in the fat cells. It triggers some things to happen in the cells, but you, your, your kidneys or your pancreas can respond and produce the normal amount of, of insulin and it can handle it uh -huh. in most cases, right? right? Unless there's, unless there's already a premature accumulation of senescent cells. But as you age, what happens is, is that your, um, pancreas, your beta cells, of your pancreas have already, um, gone into this uh this senescent senescent state and so they found that because you have senescence of the beta cells of the pancreas it's going to predispose you to having more problems with with the with the with diabetes blood sugar okay. regulation okay so senescence could be related to uh diabetes mm -hmm. they've also found that that alzheimer's is uh, is related to it because they found that there's um, the uh, accumulation of of um, loss of neural stem cell function with senescence. Yep. I so saw they that. 
So they're, they're saying that if we can correct senescence or really cor correct aging, we mm -hmm. should be able to reduce the number of people that are going into um, Alzheimer's. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, hair graying, people having their hair turned gray mm -hmm. is related to senescence. So we should see people when, as you reverse uh, senescence, we should see that change, right? And we awesome. can't list any, any products, you know, cause the, the, I guess the, uh, you know, the FDA and that are, are really coming down on, on companies for relating disease to, to, you know, products. So today you won't hear us talk about any products. You notice we haven't listed that. People Find our other there. videos. <laughs> Those are on our other videos, right? That's right. Sarcopenia is, what is related. That? Would you, sarcopenia? Yeah. Oh, it's the it's the loss of muscle as you age. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So they show that that people that that are aging they lose they lose muscle, and that's called sarcopenia. And they found that they found that that's triggered by senescence of the muscle stem cell function. Okay. Right? Glaucoma. Really? Well, yeah, when I when I started searching for diseases related to it, um, glaucoma was one of them um, that was really highly related to it. You know, um, they listed certain types of cancers. Um, interesting, which type of cancers, right? Um, melanoma. Okay pancreatic cancer right we've talked mm -hmm. about the pancreas and how diabetes right and then alzheimer's is kind of considered type 3 diabetes yes we've heard that we've talked about that um leukemia glioma which is a brain tumor okay um and and so they say that we've all got like certain set points where our body will say, oh, that's time to go into senescence. So you might be 80 before your cells could start triggering that the senescent state, but mm -hmm. somebody else might be 30. Uh-huh. Right? So so it it's it's this machinery in the body that determines that. And um, and that could be passed on from generation to generation to generation, right? And so so we're not gonna say that it can necessarily you know, uh, increase your age or, or things like that, but it's going to increase your health span. Yes. And that's exciting. Right. Because, you know, if, if I was going to, if I knew that I was only going to live to be say 60 years old, mm -hmm. but I knew I could live every single day with optimum health. Yeah. Right. right? If I knew I was going to live to be 150, Mm -hmm. optimum health that's the that's the key right so yep. diseases that other diseases right we talked about um you know some of these some of these cancers and all these different things but we talked about heart disease heart disease is the number one killer in the western world so mitocardial dysfunction strokes and aortic aneurysms are directly related to senescence wow right uh, endometriosis Really? Yeah. Pulmonary fibrosis. Emphysema. Bone marrow hypoplasia. Cirrhosis. Right? And it's all because they suggest that it's, it's because of premature um, activation of senescence. Right. Right? Makes sense. And, and it could be triggered by smoking. Mm-hmm. Right. All these different things. More nutrition, uh, environmental things, all kinds of, you know, that's why it's going to be different for everyone. What disease right. you end up with. <clears throat> yeah. And the whole, the whole problem with it is when you have this accumulation of senescent cells, it decreases your ability to recover. Mm -hmm. So even right now, while we're talking about the virus thing that's going on and I won't mention it just because they're watching us, you know, and, and all that, you know, I'm just going to say, if you have uh, if you have an increased accumulation of senescent cells, mm -hmm. you're going to have a decreased ability to recover from this thing. Yep, you can correlate that with a lot of stuff out there on the news right now. Yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna have a uh, 
You're going to have an increased risk of age-related disease. Here was an interesting study that I read about. Um, they said that, that, you know, most people or a lot of people that go through chemotherapy have that, that chronic fatigue that's associated. Mm -hmm. They just never seem to get their energy mm -hmm. levels back. Yep. So they found that when they cleared out the senescent uh, cells, those side effects of chemotherapy were gone. Yeah. They had more energy, right? Um, I thought that was, I thought that was kind of interesting. So senescent cells can, um, can cause disease and, uh, but they can also amplify it. Right. Right. Sounds like it. Yeah. I mean, isn't this all just interesting, isn't it interesting stuff, you know, so like when they talked about, when they talked about, um, COPD, Mm -hmm. You know, CPD, PD is a persistent airflow obstruction and yep. it triggers inflammation. Um, and it, it's because of an increased chronic inflammation response. And um, it's one of the, they're saying it's one of the top five leading causes of death in, uh, in developed countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And aging is considered to be one of the, um, the most important factors when you're deciding if somebody's going to have COPD. And it's triggered by um, the alveolar or airway cells going into senescence. Uh -huh. Triggered by environmental stress. Um, you know that disease that, that little kids can have? It's called Hutch Hutchinson um, Guilford progeria. Sometimes uh -huh. you just hear it called progeria. But they, 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 might be a, they might be only like a 10-year-old kid, but they look like they're 80. Yes. Mm-hmm. They found that they found that that is um, that that is caused by senescent cells. Really? Yeah, That's early really activation of senescent, and so they're finding that if you can eliminate the senescent stem cells out of them people, you can increase the the health and the lifespan, right? And uh, you know, just I'm just trying to go through all my notes here because I know you know we're we've already gone over by ten minutes. I, important well, stuff. Nobody's though, isn't got it? anything to do, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, they have nothing to do. Stay at home, listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so that that's that's what I wrote down today, Andrea. That's that was my notes on everything that I wrote down today. So you can see that you know we need normal senescence mm -hmm. because. It, it, it protects us, right? It protects us from cells that have been damaged, from DNA damage, from radiation, stress, toxins, things like that. You know, because right. we don't want those cells going out of control. So the normal body response is to put those cells into senescence, trigger them to go into senescence so that they don't become dangerous. Right. And so we don't want to stop it. But at the same time, we don't want an accumulation of, of, of these senescent cells because now they start emitting these enzymes that, that break down the cell wall matrix and cause damage to the neighboring cells. Mm -hmm. They can trigger inflammation. You know, that's why like with these stem cell clinics that I work with, um, if somebody has chronic inflammation uh -huh. And you do stem cell therapy, you do a stem cell injection with somebody that has chronic inflammation. The first thing that that stem cell is going to do is it's going to get rid of the inflammation before it actually does anything right. with the repair. Right. It'll go to the most urgent thing first. Yep. So I was just reading a study this morning, you know, just, uh, uh, and I'll read it some more. I'll, I'll read up and some more background on it. So they found that this, cancer uh, drug, this chemotherapy, uh, dastatinib, when they combine it with uh, guesertin, which is one of the ingredients in, in this really powerful um, stenolilic product that we have, right? That some mm -hmm. people have, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm just being careful on how I say this. Yeah, we're not going to talk about. Right. But I will. <laughs> yeah. So they found that they found that when they use this uh, dastatinib, which is a, which is a, a cancer drug, it, uh, it, it eliminates uh, 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 sen senescent stem cells. But the problem with it is when you use a drug, 
it tricks the body into doing something that it's not supposed to do. Ah. So you see where the problem is there? Mm-hmm. Right? We've got senescence that's supposed to be taking place. It's normal. Right. And now we got a drug that's tricking your body into getting rid of all senescent cells. Mm-hmm. Where's the problem in that? Oh, that would get rid of the ones that you need. Bingo, right? Bingo. So if you use if you use a um, uh, senolytic agent that's natural, and it only enhances the body's natural response, guess what? It's not going to do. It's not going to get rid of the ones you need. It's not going to trick your body. Right. Not going to trick your body. That's important stuff. So anyway, Andrea, you know, I, I appreciate you being here every, every week. And, and uh, you know, today we're, we're not talking about products. We're talking about science. Right. That's so right. We talked about telomeres. Mm-hmm. We talked about DNA damage. Mm-hmm. We talked about um, stem cells. Yes. We talked about sarcopenia. Mm-hmm. We talked about um, senescence. Mm-hmm. And we know of a great company that has products in all five of those categories. Yes, we do. Yes, and but we we're won't not talk about it today. It today. <laughs> but I will say that Doc and I are on here every Tuesday at noon Eastern time on this Facebook. Uh, page doctor's clinic with deck fizz and friends and all of our videos are stored in there on that page and you can go back if you're discovering us today for the first time and you're unaware of that you can go back and follow back and see all the videos that we've done before and they're also on my youtube channel and his youtube channel which is called sizzle world team s-i-s-e-l world team so we invite you to go check out all those other great interviews we've done to help people optimize their health. And um, if a friend shared this with you, get back with that friend and have a little discussion about how you can optimize your own health. And don't Thank don't you. try and don't try and learn the science. Let us do that for you. That's what we're here for every Tuesday. Is we uh, we love sharing it. And uh, as you go out and share the information with people, just share this video. Sure, it's half an hour yeah. long, but whatever. It's a tool for you to, to let people in on the great stuff that you've learned. All right. Well, Andrea, you have a wonderful week. Don't get sick. We need you. Oh, I'm not going to get sick. There's no way. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Doc. Bye.